best D&D final boss battle we have ever had. Sanja, Mara, Leolis, Lindir, Geldur, and Mortis, if you're listening to this, it's okay. The campaign is over and there are no more secrets. Yesterday we played a third session of the campaign finale, and the group, dubbed as Northern Magic Heroes by the people of Carnia, after they saved the realm from an invasion of werewolves, faced off with the ancient evil, their own ancestor, and the big bad evil of the campaign, Lich Asai in his laboratory, and were defeated. After breaking through the seventh layer of the prismatic wall guarding the entrance, the heroes stepped inside the laboratory, drained out of more than half of their abilities and spell slots. They knew the remaining three of the seven shield maidens, wraith commanders, had retreated here to protect their master, who was in the middle of a one-hour ritual to restore power to the broken artifact that would give him godlike powers. It was like going to a basement rave party. The center of the dome-shaped chamber was covered in a cloud of white fog that was pulsing with colorful lights and throbbing sounds, as Asai's ritual was recreating the prism inside a pillar of light, surrounded with five sources of power. As the party took time to cast a ritual prayer of healing, they heard the friendly voice of Asai's former self, congratulating the heroes for getting through to the lab, despite all the obstacles and protection. If you surrender now and let me finish my undertaking, the offer still stands. I will grant each of you a wish. This led to some wild speculations and discussions between the players. As Mara continued to chant the healing ritual, and finally they asked Asai, Can we, like, wish for anything and you'll make it so without questions? There was a pause, and then a reply. My children, of course I will not be able to let any of your wishes interfere with my own plans. But you can have this realm and do whatever you like. My thoughts are elsewhere. The healing ritual was complete. The heroes gave each other a meaningful look and charged into the lab. F this guy and his promises. Time to roll initiative. Winning initiative, Sanja the Barbarian and Lindir the Warlock crossed the chasm surrounding the lab center and rushed inside the fog cloud finding themselves blinded. Visibility inside the fog was an arm's length, but they found two of the sources of power for a size ritual. Special material components inside great ornate chests, with their lids held halfway open by an unseen force. Yes, there was the bucket of dragon blood the players knew about, and a brain of some unknown creature. When Sanja was trying to spill the blood bucket, she got bitten as the chest was protecting the energy source. It was a mimic. Yes, I finally found a reason to put a mimic into my campaign. But Lindir Eldritch blasted the brain into bits before the chest could react, effectively shutting down a size party. And a sigh was next in initiative. The Lich was not happy. The cloud of fog provided cover not only for a sigh, but his simulacrum as well. Note, for encounter balance, I had removed the ninth level spell slot from the simulacrum and ruled that it does not have legendary actions or resistance. On their turn, Asai retaliated on Lindir, who broke his ritual and spent his only ninth level slot. Lindir was hit by power word kill and was out. Note, Lindir with his cloak was permanently invisible, but Lich had no issue targeting him, because Lich has got true seeing. Sanja was incapacitated by the simulacrum's power word stun. The others in the party could not see what was happening, and could not target Asai. Also, they did not dare to cast big fireballs in the center, being afraid of hurting their friends. I had decided up front that a fireball would have evaporated the fog cloud. They engaged the remaining shield maidens instead. As the two heroes inside the fog could do nothing, and the rest were fighting wraiths, Asai and his simulacrum moved on to some area of effect spells. The fog cloud turned into a poisonous cloud kill, and the rest were hit by a fireball. Things started to look bleak as there still wasn't anyone in sight to target. The only hope was on the fact that cloud kill rolls forward 10 feet every round, and this way Asai was finally revealed afloat in the air. His staff gives him the ability to fly, a scorched pitch black skeleton with burned remains of a cloak fluttering around him. The others finished off the wraiths and blasted the simulacrum to bits, but Leolis the wizard was also dropped to zero. Asai's legendary action cantrips were lethal as he took the heroes down one by one with rays of frost. 4d8 cold damage. The barbarian managed to pass a save against the stun, but could not get out of the cloud kill before she was killed by the poison. Despair creeped in, as Asai used his movement to fly inside the remaining cloud of poison. Immune to it and once again heavily obscured and out of sight, whispering in the chamber, Surrender. Anyone who stops fighting will still get their reward once my work is done. Mara the sorcerer, out of spell slots, or maybe sparing the last six-level word of recall for escape, used her staff to cast a random wild magic effect. She rolled a d100, and the outcome was perfect. Fairy fire, that makes the target visible. Asai was out of legendary resistances and failed to save. I roll all enemy d20s openly. 
Asai reacted immediately with a legendary action cantrip and dropped Mara to zero. But the staff that was used to cast Fairy Fire is special. It is a gift from Nine Hells, a soul collecting device from Zariel herself, and I ruled the Fairy Fire stays in effect without Mara's concentration. Only Mortis the Grave Cleric and Geldur the Moon Druid were standing and they closed in. Mortis had his biggest six level spell slot left. We had played for hours and the pressure was on. What will you do? I cast Blight. No, wait. Blight has no effect on Undead. What can I do? Mortis moved in and cast Spirit Guardians on level 6, engulfing a Sai and a swarm of necrotic spirits. It dealt some serious damage but was not enough, and a Sai, with more legendary action cantrips up his sleeve, downed Mortis with another frosty ray. Geldur was alone and a Sai turned to face him, a skeleton shape, an eerie frame of the fairy fire glowing inside a thick cloud of poisonous smoke. The enemy had got some hits, but was definitely still going strong. Winning the battle seemed impossible at this point. The player of our druid has least experience in D&D and was looking for help from the others. But the response was, Man, we're all dead. We can't say or do anything. It's all up to you now. If I surrender, can I wish for the lives of my friends back? Gelder asked. A sigh's voice was still soft and friendly as he replied, Of course. I could imagine no better use for your reward. The fight was over. This is where the playing ended, and the rest was just telling a story. What happened to the heroes? This is still open. I'm writing an epilogue explaining the events after a size victory. Each of the players will then write their own part. What did their character do afterwards? Okay, cool. But what did Asai do? First of all, Gelder had to wait for his reward, as Asai went to replenish his material components for the ritual. The druid got a cozy demi-plane prison to spend time in, with all his basic needs met. But this time there was an unending nightmare, waiting in uncertainty for weeks and weeks. Will Asai be true to his promise, or will I die of old age inside this nicely decorated room? Asai did finally find another creature brain, reenacted the ritual, and created a new prism. He used the prism to close in the adamantium core to recreate his mega artifact. With his renewed power, he returned to Gelder to grant him his wish. The party was resurrected inside the demiplane, in the tower of their very own observatory, that was finally free from evil. But they could not open the door to exit just yet, only after the catastrophe. Outside, Asai used all his might for another nifty spell. He used all the Mega Artifact's power for his own ascension, pulling power from all the adamantium cores around the planet Orth. Arcs of light and energy connected the cores like lightning, through the planet, as Asai left this plane of existence to become something greater. A huge chunk of planet Orth, the size of the moon, cracked apart, near the northern pole, and was hurled into space, raining giant boulders around the northern hemisphere. The piece of matter became a new black moon that started orbiting Orth, further off compared to the moon we all know. And the oceans first sunk into the massive hole left behind, but soon lashed back as a wave of tsunamis as the remaining planet shuddered and imploded to find its new form. Earthquakes and extreme weather were to continue on this planet for a century, destroying all civilizations and killing off most life on the planet. So that's what happens. When the Lich wins. This is the best kind of end, one that can inspire a new beginning. Ancient heroes that failed, a world long after the fall, so many resources taken, and literally a piece of the planet lost that cannot be returned. Tell us how your campaigns ended in the comments below.